It's the first boxes to builds 2023. We're going to talk about golf club heads. What do you need to know? Welcome back to the Big Golf Shop. This is Jim McClear here, where we learn about golf club reviews, golf club fittings, golf club repairs. Also, your scores can go low. If you would, like, subscribe, hit that stuff across the bottom, and that way you get more of the videos when they drop. Also, join us on our live stream at 17.30 or 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Talk about the same stuff, larger crowd from around the world. Uh, it's really entertaining, to be honest. So join us there. All right, so golf club heads. On my last live stream, I said, well, you know, I got a lot of work coming up, and I do. And why, what would you guys like to start with, either the grip or the head? And a lot of them was like, well, let's go with the head. All right, so that's what we're starting with, with the head. As it turns out, I have a set of Ben Hogan's. Not the original, but somewhere in between the, the first company and the second company, Ben Hogan's. Now, this is a sand wedge. You guys will most likely understand it if I show you one of those. All right, this thing is pretty impressive. And not only that, but I'm doing a two through the sand wedge. <laughs> so it's gonna be pretty impressive. But what I wanted to go over with you guys is the differences in the parameters or the difference in the terminology so that we can all get on the same page and how it would help you do one, a better club head selection, two, a better club head repair, and three, better ideas of what you need when you go to a fitting. So let's get started. All right, so what you're seeing is the the Ben Hogan is a traditional blade. All right, this is a traditional blade, and that's just what and, and what they call a blade is literally called a muscle back. All right, and it's called a muscle back because of this. Now, in the day when uh, forging processes what they were, so you get the idea that only good players can play forge clubs. This is where this comes from is because only forged clubs look like that. And that was because they didn't have the technology to make cavity backs or, or multi-piece clubs or anything like that. They were basically made like this. And of course, yes, you had to be a pretty good ball striker in order to hit these things, okay? And they came in several varieties, right? Everybody had them, you know, this, we're going back to wooden shafted days where everything was like that and they had different cleek marks on them and the, that's how you did it. All right, so now we have, this is that era, and we have, and we have several new era looking. Now you saw with a nice flowing, uh, a nice flowing muscle back, right? Well now we have things that are a little sharper, right? This is a little movement of head. You see where there's more weight in the toe? That's not to over, so you don't overcook it. Here's one, another one that's more of a traditional right all have the same kinds of characteristics on them they just have a different look to them okay and so what is that difference all right so when we start talking about we'll just use this guy when we start talking about golf clubs there's certain things we want to know about a golf club we want to know its hosel dimension the hosel dimension in an iron will be either be 355 or 370 now you might run into older ones that might be 270. They're, they're out and you won't see too many. There's a Wilson fat shaft out there. I believe that's a seventies or eighties type club and the fat shaft might even be nah, about eighties, nineties. Anyway, the fat shaft is this ridiculously big club uh, that doesn't, you know, they don't make it anymore and find you basically need an adapter because they don't make any shafts for it anymore. So right now, as it stands, 
355, 370. That way you can pick a good shaft to go in there without modification. Now, can you modify? Sure, if this is a 355 and you have a 370 shaft, you can ream most of these clubs out. You can do that, I do that a lot, all right, in order to get a shaft that we wanna put in a club. Now, can you put a 355 into a 370? Again, the answer is yes. Normally with a brass shim or some sort of sleeve, right? And they'll have a sleeve and you can do that as well. Just gotta make sure that all the surfaces have been uh, abraded and have enough epoxy on them so that you have a nice, easy, tight bond, okay? Now, the uh, another couple of things you wanna know about is uh, the hosel depth. Now, th that's an advanced that's an advanced concept in that, it, but it needs to get in there at least an inch to inch and a quarter at a minimum, right? Inch to inch and a quarter, I'd say that'd be about standard. If you're at three quarters inch or something, that means that there's something in here preventing them from going all the way. The average hosel depth is about an inch to an inch and a quarter. Now, I have taken all these apart already from some nice old rifle shafts that were considered 6.5s, which were extra stiff back in the day. These are original rifle shafts, they're really, they're really cool. Anyway, th these, when they were made, had a lot of epoxy in them. And what I did is I, I kept a pile of it, just to show you how much epoxy went into, out of these 10 clubs, I only did six of these, and this is the pile of six. So now we know what we gotta, you know, what you can use to put in there. Now, how do we describe a lot of these things? All right, so what we have is blade length. All right, which would be more descriptive of from the center line here to the toe in over here. The longer the blade length, the more forgiving a club is supposed to be. The shorter or more compact, again, means more players like. The other one is, is the offset. And the offset can be from the leading edge of the, of the face to the leading edge of the hosel. This one in particular has almost none. All right, now we get into you get into more game improvement where you have the leading edges here and then the hosel is over here, that is, means more offset. More offset again means more uh, forgiving, right? More forgiving. All right, I wanna interject here in that I've been talking about all these parameters and what makes things more forgiving. From a fitting aspect, as a fitter, you need to know that kind of stuff. The real problem here is, is that we say more forgiving, more forgiving, more forgiving. And that's true, it makes it easier to hit. Well, I should say that. Uh, um, the offsets, the links, all those different things I was telling you about make them easier to hit. Now, during a fitting process, if you're a super duper low handicapper, you may not need these parameters and it might just be the opposite for you. If I give you something easy to hit, it might be more difficult for a better performance. So when you're doing these fittings, they tend to match these different categories. However, that's what the fitting bears out. So try a few different things. Try one that's a little smaller. You may find that you hit it well. If you're a good handicapper or a low handicapper, you might find out that the bigger one works better for you. That's all the reason for the, the, the fitting and the dynamic fitting. And the reason why I wanted to say this is because we get hung up on well, this, I am this kind of player and I need to hit this kind of club. Well, that's not true at all. All right, you can be a, I've seen guys that are beginning golfers hit players, cavities, or even blades better than the most forgiving golf club out there. And vice versa, some very, very good golfers hitting some very forgiving clubs and scoring tremendously well. So you gotta keep that in mind when you go to the fittings. I just wanted to inject that so that everybody's on the same page. All right, some other ones that are, are typical are sole widths, right? Sole widths. Now on a player's club like these, they're what we call butter knife edges. And they're very, very narrow, all right? Now if we go and look at, say another traditional blade, not too far off, right? Not too far off. And, and so a lot of that hasn't changed in a while. Even, even with this guy who's notoriously got a wide sole, not, not too much difference. So the more wide the sole is, the more forgiving it is again. Now, from a fitting aspect, if you're a picker, you, a, a thinner sole isn't going to hit, isn't going to hurt you. But if you're a person that takes a, you know, divots like Jasper Parnovic, it's the size of Rhode Island, 
then yeah, a thicker sole will help bounce you out and kind of skid you across, make it easier to hit. Okay, so that's part of the fitting aspect of it. Again, more offset allows you to get the club uh, closed in that nanosecond or that blink of an eye in order to get that club more square so that you don't fade it off into the sunset. The longer the blade length means that you can be off center and it's not nearly as penal. Uh, a taller club in that same concept, as long as that center of gravity stays below the equator of the ball, good to go and it gets up in there. Uh, those are some of the basic parameters for what you need to know for what the club is doing. Now there is more, there's blade height, there is uh, the, the length of the hosel in order to adjust and their centers of gravity, all that kind of stuff. Now, when we leave these and go to the other one, this will be real quick because we're really focusing on the blades, you have cavity back or perimeter weighted. This is probably about as most traditional as one can get as far as perimeter weighted. And that's exactly what it sounds like. All that they've taken that muscle and they've moved all that weight around, around the club. Why did they do that? It's to add to MOI, right? Moment, uh, moment of inertia resistance to twisting. So when you're off center, particularly on the blade, all that, all that weight's in the middle, right? Now, if you got all the weight on the outside, it's a little bit more resistant to twisting. Now you can move weights around where you see it's thicker on the bottom than it is on the top, and that's moving center of gravity, it's getting the weight under the ball. See where I'm going with that? All right, so this is considered a player's cavity. It's not extraordinarily deep. There's not a lot of offset, very little. All right, it's a very nice cavity. Then you can go to the other end of the spectrum, which can be hollow bodies or even more forgiving blades, in which you, or yeah, more forgiving irons which you see something like that. And they have monstrous soles, right? Very large soles and very big cavities and they're very deep. When they're very deep, it pulls the center of gravity back so the ball can get up in the air a little bit easier. They also typically come with thicker top lines and that's a cosmetic appeal. Thicker top lines are basically a resultant of making the club head bigger in order to put all the technologies in them. And then you have your, the same thing with hosel depths, hosel lengths, offsets, blade lengths, which are significantly bigger. And then you have your soles and the, and, and the list goes on. But that, and that's what these are all for. Then you can get into hollow body aspects. Now the Srixon was a hollow body. That guy's a hollow body. Uh, almost every company has a hollow body. And a hollow body is something that is made to look almost blade-like but is actually perimeter weighted. And this one tells the story the best. So that's a hollow body. And you can see where the perimeter weighting is around here. And they've put a cap on this to kind of give it a decorative appeal. On a lot of other ones, it looks like it, a blade. So it can give you a big fat blade look. And it looks cool in the bag, but it, you know, it doesn't look anything like, anything like that. It just, imagine this thing about twice as wide and, and probably a, a quarter as big and that would be their version of their of their uh, hollow body so just to kind of give you an idea now the the width on this one uh, is pretty wide and this this is the forgiving one where where this one is not well <laughs> that's kind of bad where this one is less forgiving than the other one because of the offset and the size this one's just a hair smaller with less offset so every company's got them, right? Everybody's got one of those things. And it's the, what you really need to know about this is if you're doing a repair, you need to know the hosel dimensions. If, and because, and then there's also other ones in the, from the bottom of the board to the ground. These are all concepts, but what you really need to know is the size and its insertion. That way you make sure that you're getting a good bond so that the head won't fly off. And you got the right, the right shaft so that the shaft will fit tightly and the glue will do its job. The other parts are sole width so that you don't make diggers or make it harder for the pickers to use. The offsets so that you can get your club closed if necessary. If you don't, then you probably don't need that much. And then, and then the, the size of the golf club, right? And that's all, it's on two things, your skill sets and your preferences. 
There's sometimes those align, sometimes they don't. And you got to kind of find that happy middle. So that's what we were talking about as far as golf club heads go. Now, what I'm doing is I've already taken the, the uh, rifle shafts out and I'm putting in some softer uh, Nippon, the Neo 950s, and I'm soft stepping them. So it's going to be kind of hard starting with the two, but after that, we're going to be fine. And then we're going to put them all together. So you know what, uh, what I'm going to do is that, that was really what I wanted to tell you about was the golf club heads and the things that we can do. Now, uh, as far as repairs go, and as far as a steel shaft removal, you can heat the hosel. It takes about oh, 120 seconds, right? 30 seconds in, in three quadrants, 90 seconds, sorry. 90 seconds and if you've got a good grip on the on the uh, grip and you can get turn you can get torque and you can break it free if it if it gets a little too hot obviously you need to use gloves and if you can't get it turned then you need to use a shaft puller and then what you need to do is you need to clean it out so you don't get that so that you do get that pile of crud that is normally associated with the epoxy that way you know you have a clean hosel a good abraded shaft good epoxy so that goes in there and the club head stays on forever. And that's what we want, right? <laughs> we want the club head to stay on. So there, there you go. So if you got any questions on this, put them in the show notes. We'll try and answer them as best we can. Join us on the live stream. And as always, let's see your scores go low.